Hey, what's going on everybody? Today we're going to be talking about snorkels. And the main portion of this video is going to be about this snorkel specifically that is on my 1982 Toyota four-wheel drive Hilux pickup. Lots of people have asked me, what snorkel kit is this? How did you make it work for your truck? How did you get it to fit right? Well, we're going to go over that. As well, we're going to go over maybe some myths about snorkels and their uses, and maybe we can answer some questions for you. So in typical guns, gears, and beers fashion, sit back, grab yourself something cold to drink, and let's do it. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Any other way across that bridge? No. It's okay. There's a lot of water coming yeah, in. This rig can take it. The engine's got a snorkel. Oh God, look at those cars. They're crazy. They'll never make it. You guys like that intro i thought it was pretty fitting for for this type of video so i hope you guys enjoyed that little b-roll footage there so the first thing we're going to discuss before we move on to the hilux specific snorkel is we're going to talk about head type so this particular snorkel is a safari snorkel it's uh probably the most famous brand name when it comes to snorkels you know there's like air raid i think is one of them and you know safari and then there's a lot of aftermarket and you know chinese type manufacturer snorkels but safari is probably the the most common worldwide so this specific safari snorkel has the air ram head i believe is what it's called and one of the unique things about this uh, versus maybe other snorkels and i'm not a snorkel expert so i don't know this specifically about other brands but one of the cool things about the safari brand is with the air ram head uh, a lot of people think that well if it's raining you got to turn your snorkel around that's not true at all when it comes to this type of air ram head so any rain or water that happens to go forward and get inside your snorkel if you're moving forward and airflow is coming through it it actually gets pushed out the side through these little vent holes and i'll try to show you that as best i can so this little spot right here is a vent hole vent hole vent hole so that's actually these are actually slots that come down in the side of the snorkel and it'll allow dust pine needles water it'll allow all that stuff not all of it but a good percentage of it to escape as it get, as it gets forced into the air ram head it'll get sucked along the side and then it'll get spit out so that's one thing that is kind of a common maybe myth about snorkels is it'll allow rain in well sure it will but it'll go out the side one of the things they do recommend however is if you're in snow they do recommend to turn it around because snow can build up right here and it'll restrict your airflow so they do recommend to turn this around in snow but in rain which i live in washington state i i don't turn this around at all it stays just like that is year round i don't have any problem leaving it forward so that's the typical safari snorkel air ram intake now i'm going to show you what's called a pre-cleaner all right guys so this is what's called a collector pre-cleaner it's an australian made piece i really like the australian made four-wheel drive snorkel stuff it's just really good quality it's actually it's made by a company called donaldson which is a under the safari name so it's a really good snorkel um 
pre cleaner. So basically what this is, and you see it on a lot of farm equipment and some, you know, trucks and stuff like that, but what it is is it's basically from my knowledge of this stuff is it's better to collect dust like say you're you're driving down dusty dirt roads maybe you live in like arizona or texas and you're driving down a lot of dusty dirt roads and maybe you're, you're traveling with other people basically what this is is a uh, it creates what's i believe called a cyclonic cy cyclone effect and i'm gonna try to link a picture up here somewhere but basically what happens is so you replace your you replace your head on your snorkel you take the head off and you put the pre-cleaner on there and what happens is air gets sucked in through here and these little there's these little fins right here and it creates a cyclone cyclone effect and if you can see there's a little cone shape piece of plastic in there and what happens is anything that gets sucked up pine needles dirt debris bugs i've cleaned this out and i've had bees and stuff in there what happens is the air spins and it forces the dirt and dust down to the side and then it collects in this pre-cleaner here and then it'll say right here empty re dust receptacle when reaches this level so i've never ever let it get anywhere near that level i've only had it down to like here but it'll this will literally fill with dust and it'll push the dust to the side and it's a, it's a good good dust collector basically so you know like i say if you live down dirt roads or you're traveling uh, with a lot of vehicles and you're maybe the third or fourth car back and you're getting sucked in a lot of dust this is a really good thing for you so snorkels are not just for water they're also very good for supplying fresh air to your vehicle because the snorkel is up higher so for instance i'm going to give you a little story here the factory air intake this is my daily driving 2004 tacoma the air intake for this particular truck is right here the air intake is right inside this plastic fender liner so it's inside the engine bay for one, so it's getting hot air. And engines really like cold, dense air to run. They, they like colder air. They like colder climates. So it's by putting the air intake up higher, you're getting cooler air forced into your air box and into your throttle body versus hot air from inside the engine bay. So the when you're traveling like for water for instance this is obviously about as high as you could go before risking getting water sucked into the factory air intake but when you raise it obviously you have a much higher air intake so snorkels aren't just for water they're also about getting that air intake high and providing colder air and more fresh air versus down here where your tires turning up all the uh the dust and dirt from the road so now that we've talked a little bit about this snorkel the pre-cleaner why don't we get into the Toyota pickup portion of this that I know a lot of you guys are watching for. All right, guys. So probably the part that a lot of you are watching for. What snorkel can I put on my 79 to 83 Toyota four-wheel drive pickup truck? I can't find one. There's no manufacturer-specific way to buy a snorkel and just put it on my truck. Well, I'm going to show you how you can put a snorkel kit on your 79 to 83 Toyota four-wheel drive pickup. This is all based on factory 22R carbureted trucks. If you have a fuel injected swap, you know, 2RZ, 3RZ, 22RE, which I plan to do a 3RZ swap at some point. If you have that, it doesn't apply. Obviously the snorkel mount does, right? Mounting it to the, the fender and, and the A-pillar. But how it actually connects to your intake, that will be up to you. But for right now, this is factory Toyota 22R carburetor and how i got it hooked up and what a perfect way to do it versus a all original 83 four-wheel drive 22r carburetor and then the modified snorkel on the 22r carburetor so why don't we sit back and tear into it i think i already said let's get into it sorry i like to ramble let's do this all right jeff just stop talking and tell me what snorkel kit i need to buy well here you go this snorkel kit is for 84 to 88 Toyota pickups and 4Runners. How did I make it work? Let me show you. So basically, what I did was I took the template, taped the template down on the side of the fender. In fact, nah, I'm not going to show you guys the template. It's You guys know what a template looks like. But all I basically did was I sat here, lined it up. I had quite a few vitamin R's in me probably. I sat here and I lined it up along this factory door uh, you know, crease here, whatever, door gap. And I figured if I just use some step bits to drill out the three holes, I can make this thing work and wiggle it around. So what you guys are going to tell here is, I'm going to try to do this, I'm kind of up against some stuff on the side of my shop. 
this snorkel shape doesn't qu sorry accidentally cut out this snorkel shape doesn't quite line up with the a pillar it's a little different shape well that's because the cabs are shaped differently on the 84 to 88 pickups and forerunners so what i did was i just lined it up as best i could what you'll see right here this piece right here is the factory uh, a pillar piece they give you with the snorkel except it's shaped like an l what i did was i just took it bent it in my vise basically flattened it out and screwed it to my a pillar and there's there's three little nylon type little you know those little screw plug things like drywall anchors that they give you and i just i made the holes pretty big shoved them in there and then that's how these three attach i want to really show you guys oops bonking around it you know it's not the perfect fit for this truck but it does work and it does look good so if you look right here it almost matches the body line then right here, you can tell that there's a little gap right there where the fender shape's a little different. So what I took was I took some electrical conduit pieces right here, and I just filled in the hole. And then you can kind of see it along the factory line right there. By the way, this is a piece of foam. This is a foam pre-cleaner that I put a zip tie on, and it's just a, it's a little foam pre-cleaner to you know catch dirt and pine needles and stuff. Okay, so how did I make it work? Well, let's go over to the stock 22R carburetor. Really quick, because my battery's dying, guys. So, factory 22R carburetor. You got the air filter, crossover pipe, factory box that goes in the front. Well, take this POS box, throw it in the trash, take this tube, flip it 180 degrees. Factory air filter, factory crossover tube, I took that piece right there and I basically turned it 180 degrees. I just flopped it. Then all this is, this is just some cheap air duct from AutoZone. It was like 10 bucks for this little piece of flex tube. Hose clamp, bend, right there to the snorkel. That's it. That's all I had to do. And it completely bolts right up. No air restriction, no nothing. That's how you can do it, guys. This snorkel, by the way, was like 140 bucks off Amazon. It's a cheap off-brand snorkel. I'll try to post a picture of it right here somewhere. And it works fine. I think it looks good. It looks good on this truck. Well, guys, that's it. If you have any questions, drop them below and I'll try to answer them. And give me a thumbs up if you aren't... Or give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Give me a thumbs down if you don't, which I'd prefer you didn't. Hit that notification icon, like, and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. I, I just hit a thousand subs, which for YouTube, that's like nothing. That's absolutely low end, but I think it's pretty cool. I hit a thousand subs. So uh, I'm going to toss in some more B-roll here. If you didn't believe anything I've said about snorkels and anything that I've told you or whatever, I'm going to throw in some facts from the experts. So this video clip that I'm about to show you, I, I, ho I hold no license to it or anything. It's just clips I found online, and it's from safari and i want you guys to see it it's a great short clip and again i don't own the video i just want to splice it in here because it's a lot of good information to try to help you guys whether you're getting a snorkel for your pickup truck or you're getting a snorkel for anything snorkel everything guys cheers take care hi i'm brian mcmeekin from safari 4x4 engineering and we're here today to talk about the benefits of a safari snorkel a lot of people ask what are the benefits of a snorkel the obvious one, water crossings. Vehicles as a standard vehicle, generally only three quarters of the way up to the tyre, to the top of the tyre is as deep as you can go, before risking water ingress into the engine. Now for a diesel, that's game over. Rebuild the engine. So a common misconception for snorkels is that they're just used for water crossings. But in reality, for most people, they're used for driving in a lot of dust, they're used for getting cooler, cleaner air into the engine. They can also be used for snow. When you've got a lot of snowfall, it can build up on the top of here. It can also build up in your air intake and across your radiator. So we can turn the air around backwards and make sure that you're getting nice, cool, clean air into the car. So when we're traveling down dusty roads for hours on end, your wheel is churning up all the dust. 
and that's where your air intake is coming in. With the Safari Snorkel, you're getting your air intake from up here. Now with this air ram that we've got on the top, it is very clean and very cool air. The air that's going into the engine is a much better quality and much cleaner air and much better for your car. It's a better quality air into your engine. If you're in convoy as well, the dust is also settling by the time that you get through and it gets to this height. Any dust that you have come through there has to make this sharp turn. And as it makes the sharp turn around here, a lot of it is forced out through the gaps in the side. At Safari, we're a very proud Australian manufacturer. We use Australian materials and we make all of our products in Australia. So if you're looking to protect your investment, protect your engine and give it good, clean, quality air, look at the Safari Snorkel.